Great. So let me introduce myself. I see a lot of new faces on here, people I don't know. My name is Kyle Holleran, and I've been with KW for 11 years. I was an agent. I was a team leader. I was a tech uh, ambassador for six market centers. Um, and I'm part of the KW Labs team. Um, I'm a lab, labs advisor with KWRI. So I'm currently the GM of six market centers. So I live and breathe real estate. And I was kind of one of the, the first people that was in command and, and giving feedback on it. So I've been in, in, in it since the, uh, since the very beginning. So my goal here today is we have just a great class. You guys walk away with some, you know, some action items. Um, whenever I teach a class, this is always what I say. If you sit here for today for two hours and you don't go implement anything, you're wasting two hours. I'd rather you go like take a walk in the rain and splash in some puddles or something. Okay. So my goal is, is that we leave here today with, you know, activity so that you guys can grow a great business. <laughs> Today, we're gonna to be going over um, designs and campaigns. So my question always is, what about those two topics are you hoping to learn about today so that this class is worth your time and is a success? So if you guys could give me some ideas about what you're looking to learn today, I wanna to make sure I cover any sort of hot spots that we have. Can you hear me? I can. Good morning. Um, Good morning. I have problems with campaigns because, you know, when I, I'm trying to send a campaign and I write a letter or something, I don't know how to, to put it into the system in order to send it to, uh, to ma mail it. Okay. So are you talking about email there? Like in an yes. email, like you write email. an email? Okay. Awesome. Correct. All right. So we'll go over, we'll go over that today. Thank you. Mm -hmm. A lot of you probably sitting there like, I don't know what I don't know yet, right? And that's fine. We'll go over everything kind of as we go through today a little bit. All right, let's break this up into two major categories, okay? So we're going to go ahead and start today with designs. And this is your avenue for all of your marketing materials, okay? Um, has anyone now on here ever used Canva before or any other kind of program like that to kind of create marketing materials? Yes? Okay. So this is our Canva. Right, and it's with a company that's called WeBrand. And I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Let's go ahead and kind of get started. Here. And I'm gonna mute you guys. Let's have great Zoom etiquette today, right? So if you're not talking, let's go ahead and mute so we don't have a lot of background noise. And when you have something to say, I want you just to come off of mute um, or raise your hand and I'll take you off of mute so that we can ask questions and, and go throughout that process, fair? Awesome. All right, so let me share my screen. All right, so here's kind of the first, everyone know how to log into command? Is there anyone that's having trouble getting logged into command or everyone's logged in, everyone's got their username and password, we're good to go on that. All right, very good. All right, so who's used designs yet? Has anyone gone in and played with designs a little bit? Can I get a little bit of feedback from anybody that's kind of messed with it a little bit? Lauren, I saw you raise your hand. Yeah, for me, it's pretty um, intuitive, pretty simple, like, especially for somebody who has like no background in graphic design or anything like that. I've been yep. able to do some pretty cool stuff. Um, I will say like maybe some things that I have difficulty with are like, um, there may be like a really cool template um, that like the title of it, I just wanna change the words, but keep like the same design of the title because mm -hmm. I don't know how to make like a title that looks that cool. Okay. But for some of them that, it, they're not quite as customizable, but yeah. like overall, I've been able to do some pretty cool stuff with design so far. Okay, awesome. I don't have a design background either, right? So I wanna have some quick things. These would be social media posts, right? Things to put on Facebook, on Instagram, stories, but this goes even deeper than that, right? This even goes into listing presentations, right? So is anyone sitting there and they're like, hey, what, if someone calls me and wants to list their home, what am I sending to them, right? Or what am I taking over to the house when I meet with them? Does anyone feel that way? Does anyone have their listing presentation or would everyone like to have a listing presentation? Great. There's four of them in here. There's a buyer consultation in here as well. Okay. So there's a lot, anything to do with marketing, right? I want you to think designs. And if you can get in and play with this just a little bit and learn some of the basics, this opens a, a really big area for you. Now we're going to parlay this together a little bit later with campaigns. And in campaigns, we have something called social posts, right? Which is a free way just to set up your social media, right? So you can have scheduled posts, right? So I want you to think about this. You could go into designs and create six or seven different social media posts, right? And then go to campaigns and schedule them all for the month of April 
and now go lead gen, right? Now go meet people. But within a one or two hour time block, we have all of our social media is now running. We have things being posted on Easter and on Mother's Day and on whatever. You guys kind of get the point here. So designs is where we get the stuff that we're going to eventually use and put out into the, uh, into the ecosystem. Okay. Now in the first class, you guys did your marketing profile. Yes. Everybody do your marketing profile. All right. You need to make sure that, that that's done because designs pulls from that marketing profile. All right. Some of those things get pulled in from there. So let's go ahead and get into designs. So on the left-hand side over here, we have all of our icons, right? Remember if you click the little red KW, it'll kick out all the names until you get used to all the names of everything and then you can kick them back in again, right? So designs is our little easel down here with a little uh, paintbrush and let's go ahead and open up designs. All right, so what you're gonna see here on this home screen are designs that you created. So if this is blank for you, that's okay, right? If you see a few things in here, those would be things that you went and played around with a little bit right? This is not where all the designs are hosted. So I always get that question. Now notice that there's a sort button over here. So you can sort on either, hey, was I, do I want to see my oldest materials first or my newest ones? Um, that's your sort button there. Up top here, we see a green button, right? That says create design. So these are the four things that you can create with designs. You can create emails. So these are where all of our templates are. You can do social media posts. So again, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, all of that. Print materials, flyers, brochures, business cards, right? Print materials typically are two-sided. Social posts are usually one-sided. Does that make sense? There's not a front and a back. It's a digital piece of marketing. And then finally, video. Now, video is a very simple one, right? You can create these little neighborhood videos. We're not going to spend a lot of time there today. Um, but basically, you can put in average list price, sales price, and they can create a video for you that you could use to post on social media or something along those lines, right? It's a generic template uh, video that you can create. We're going to really focus on these three today. Any questions on the types of designs that we can create? Okay. Don't be afraid to use the chat log either. I'll, I'll monitor the chat. So if anyone has questions or want to type something in, go ahead and do that. All right, let me ask a question here. Is anyone on the call right now, are they sitting there and on their agenda for today is to create a marketing piece of some sort? Is anyone trying to create something? We can use that as a real life example. Joy, what you got? Um, pretty much everything. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm new, so, you know, I'm learning. So okay. I'm trying to do baby steps. Mm -hmm. And, you know, of course, this this is one of them that's important, especially for me, probably the social media mm -hmm. um, is, is really important, getting all that set up and out to, you know, people that I do know. Okay. Um, okay. okay. All right, perfect. So let's do social first, and then we're going to go to print, and then we're going to go to email. Does that work for everybody? All right, so let's go ahead and click on social. When you click on social, it's going to highlight. You probably, it's really hard to see on the screen here, but it does highlight that Kelly green. Once we do that, we can then are going to click on continue. All right, and that should take you over into our design suite. And so this is kind of a little separate site that we come into. And so we're going to, we're going to go ahead and let that load up here. Now, as this loads... If you have multiple versions of your market center logo, if you have multiple versions of your own logo, you have different headshots that you really like, you can upload all of those into designs and be able to use them whenever you want to. So a one-time task brings everything in and then we get to use them from now moving forward, okay? So I'm actually gonna start with right here, you see that on this screen, we have four main tabs at the very top. We have templates, exactly what it sounds like, images, my designs, and assets. Okay, so we're going to come back to templates. Let's go over to images here. So this is where they actually have like different photos that you could try to use for your project. So um, one thing I'm going to tell you is you don't want to just go to Google and pull in a bunch of pictures, right? Because there's reverse searching these days and you get in trouble for doing that. 
So there's either some great photos in here that you can use for your marketing pieces. And I'll show you how we're going to use these in just a minute. Or there's some really good royalty-free photo websites, which you should get used to using. Okay, so one of them is called uh, pixabay.com, P-I-X-A-B-A-Y. I'm actually going to, I'll pull it up here. So pixabay.com. And this is basically where the photographers had said, hey, you can use my pictures at no cost, right? And it kind of keeps you out of trouble. So if I wanted to come in here, if I wanted to search for uh, Washington, D.C., all right, I can hit search and I'll find all these different photos that I can use without getting in trouble. I don't want to just Google Washington, D.C. and pull pictures off of Google. Does that make sense to everybody? All right, let's stay out of jail. Kind of a joke, you'll get a fine. But let's, let's make sure we don't do that. All right, so we're going to get back to these pictures here in a little while. Assets is really one of where I want to draw your attention to. Okay, this is the one-time activity and designs that will save you a lot of time when you're creating your different marketing pieces. On the left-hand side, under assets, we see it says colors and fonts, images, text, logos, elements, videos, and files. I want you to really focus on images here, okay? And I want you to focus on logos. So any pictures that I upload into this asset section are now available for me to use over and over and over again, all right? So images, and then you even have uh, logos here. And so this is where you can upload either like a team logo, if you have one of some sort, right? That's just like a little B that I put in there. People always ask me what's up with the bug. Um, or I can put in my KW Market Center logo as well, okay? Now, I know the answer to this is gonna be yes. So I'm not gonna ask the question. We're just gonna go look at it. Yep, uh, so Lauren wrote in there, Unsplash, another great place. Awesome. If you guys have resources like that, put them in the chat, all right? We can make sure that we all write down what those different resources are as we go. Okay, where do we get our office logo from? Does anyone know where we get all of our office logos from? All right, I want you guys to write this down because this is really important. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to kwconnect.com. Okay, so kw, whoop, I wrote the wrong, didn't type it in, kwconnect.com. And we should come here. Everybody familiar with KW Connect? This is like a video library resource. Um, hopefully you guys know what this is. If not, start digging into it a little bit. So we're on kwconnect.com. Next thing I want you to do is go to resources. That's click number one, resources. We're gonna scroll down and we're looking for the tab that says marketing. Click number two is marketing. And then right here in the top left-hand corner, the very first box says logos and branding. We're going to go ahead and click on that. And now on this page, you are going to be able to scroll down just a little bit, okay? And you've got all of your generic KW logos in here, every color scheme. Um, but you're going to scroll down just a little bit. You're actually going to see a little box. I think I just went right by it. Let's see, right here. It says search for market center logos. And you can actually type in your office. So I'll type in Fairfax Gateway. And there it is, my market center number. And now I can actually download all of the official logos for my office. Okay. So again, every color scheme, red, white, blue, and all of them are important, right? Because if I have a red background, do I want to use the red KW logo? No, they're going to blend into each other. Okay. I want to use the white KW logo. So that's why you need to download this zip file because you, you might need to use the different logos depending on the type of materials that you're putting together. Okay. Now here's my next question. Does anyone know what a PNG is compared to a JPEG? So we have two different file types, JPEGs and PNGs. And this is really important because this is what elevates your marketing just a little bit to make it look really good. Who knows the difference between those two files? All right, let me, let me show you an example. Uh, let's go to my images. Okay, I'm actually, let me see if I can download this. I can, great. Just so I can quickly use it. Okay, 
Do you see how the background of this picture has like the background of the photo, right? The gray drop, drop back that someone, when I was taking my picture. Okay, so that is a JPEG, meaning that the background is solid. And anywhere you move that, if I move that on top of it, it'll continue to be a square. Okay. A PNG file means that there is no background. So if I laid this on top of something, you could see the red behind it. It wouldn't be like an actual square. It would just be the logo itself. So let me, let me show you an example. Here's a great resource. There is a website. It's called remove.bg. This is, a, this is one of your special Kyle uh, resources here. So remove.bg. It's a website. Okay. And what this will do is this will actually remove the background out of a picture. So let me show you what it looks like. So I can say upload image. And I'm going to upload that picture that I just pulled in from designs. And now see how it's the checkerboard behind the, the, my head there. I just took out the background. So it went from a JPEG into a PNG. All right, so I'm gonna hit download here. And I'm actually gonna upload this one into my images or my assets section in command. Okay, so I can show you how we do that. So I'm on images. I'm gonna say upload from my computer and I'm gonna bring in that PNG. So you see the difference here on my files, what the two pictures look like? And I'll bring that in. And then we'll use this in just a minute. There we go, okay? So that way when you see someone's head or there's a full body shot and they're like leaning against a yard sign or something, right? They could take that picture in their office, they cut out the background. Now we can use that image and kind of put it wherever we want to. It's kind of cool. All right, so that's your assets section of designs, images and logos. Does anyone have any questions about this section of assets? No questions, everybody's good. All right, let's jump back over then and let's start to dig into the templates here. Um, okay, so when we come into templates, you should see categories over here on the left-hand side. I, I'm sorry, I have a question about the assets. Sure. What you did is about the background is just for pictures or that can be used for videos as well? It's just for pictures. It's a okay. picture file. Yep, good question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so templates, right, back here. On the left-hand side, these are our different categories. So let's just go over them really quickly. now. You may not have some of these categories because I'm in leadership, I get some leadership marketing pieces. So you may not have all these, but let's look through the important ones. So listings, buyer, lead generation, business basics, holidays, professional services, luxury, and collections, okay? So we're gonna start with a category. Let's say we're gonna take a new listing, right? Let's, let's say we're gonna create some listing marketing pieces. If I click on listings, Here's all the different subcategories under listings. Is it a coming soon? Is it for sale? Is it just listed, just sold, et cetera, okay? So now you get to choose, let's say I have a, a house coming soon. I get to choose the subcategory. And once I do that, here come all the marketing pieces that are in that subcategory, okay? They're all coming soon pieces. Everybody clear on how I got here? Up top, you can filter. Do you want to see all of them? Do you want to see the stories? This, this is basically the format of the image itself. Or, right, so you have social stories. So who, who on here uses Reels or Facebook? Anybody use stories? Okay. So those are obviously your rectangular, more rectangular. There's your size. They're already formatted to that size. Then you have social square. Okay. Which social media network typically uses square pictures? Megan said it, but she's on mute. Instagram? Instagram, exactly, okay? So if you wanted to make an Instagram post, I'm gonna suggest you use the square photo because that's the format for Instagram. And then if I go to social wide, this works for basically all the rest of them, okay? Facebook, LinkedIn, right? Again, this is kind of maximize the size of the graphic for that social media network. All right, everybody clear about the types of marketing social media assets? All right, so now what we're gonna do is 
we're going to pick which one do I like the best. And, and I want you to remember, almost all of these are fully editable. Okay, so you may not like everything about it, but the next thing you're going to do is you're going to look at these. And right here we have, uh, what's that, 5, 10, 11. We have 11 different marketing pieces. Which one do you like the best? Okay, so Lauren, you just jumped on there. Pick one for me. Which one do you like the best? The one in the middle on the left-hand side. Middle left. Like here? Up? Down the... Yeah, that one. I like that one. Okay. So obviously this one has full image, right? So more about the, the picture there. And then it's got a little coming soon. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say use. Okay. Now here's the thing to remember, guys. If you like this and you set it up with your picture and your headshot and all these different things, I can use it for my listing 123 Main Street. And then two weeks later, when I have a, my next listing, I can start with this one. I don't need to recreate it from scratch. All I have to do is change the address and the picture. So it should be the first time you do this is you're creating some graphics. Every time after that, you're editing the first version so it's easier and easier each time. Is that clear? Okay. So here we go. So I've got my, my, my picture or my template here comes up. Okay. And then on the left-hand side, again, we have these different categories. So you have images, you have text, you have your logos, you have different elements. So just like Canva, right? I can search for arrows or pictures or whatever it's going to be. Uh, KWLS, animation, and then help. Okay. So what do you guys see on this graphic here? What are some of the things that we're going to need to add or we might want to add so that it pops on Facebook? Is this boring? What's that? Market Center. Something. Market Center. Okay. Mm -hmm. So notice that on each of the materials up here, there is a logo and it always says KWDBA name. Everybody see that? It's just a placeholder. Here's the great thing. When I click on that logo right there, it automatically takes me to my logo tray and brings in my other logos, okay? And if I'm selected on the logo, you can see how the square is here, okay? You can see that the square is here. When I, when I hover over my logo for my market center, there is a replace logo button. This is the easiest way to do it. And I can actually then hit replace logo and there's my logo. KW Fairfax Gateway just came flying in. Everybody see it? So again, if I save this and I use it again the next time, I don't have to worry about my logo. Like it's going to say KW Fairfax Gateway already on it. If I'm not selected on the logo, I can simply add the logo. So you can see if I click on that logo, it'll bring it in and then I can move this thing around. I can also move this one around anywhere I want to, but that's how you bring your logo in. Okay. Now guys, if I was using the JPEG format of this logo, Box. That makes it look clunky and kind of old, right? I want that logo to kind of sit in the sky so it doesn't take up a lot of space. Okay. All right. Now, in our MLS up in Northern Virginia area, right, the bright MLS, they don't syndicate outcoming soon listings. Okay. So there's a great little tool right here called KWLS that once it's active on the market, I can pull in all the pictures from the MLS. But if the MLS is not syndicating out the listing, we don't have the pictures. But you should have the pictures from your photographer, right? So what you can do is, is that we can actually click on the main photo here and I can go up to my images tab and I can add any picture I want, okay, from my computer. And I actually encourage people to use the photos from your photographer because they are of higher quality than they are when they get compressed and sent out via the MLS, okay? So I can now come in here and I can say, hey, let's grab a picture and I'll upload a, I'll come to a, let's see if I can find a quick photo here. This is probably deadly. So let's do this. I'm gonna just gonna have, there's a couple stock photos here. I'm just gonna add this one. Let's say that's my listing. Okay, and someone built some LA mansion in the middle of Fairfax, who knows? All right. So that's all I did was, all I had to do was switch the picture out and now it's the listing, my, my listing picture. This is fairly easy, right? Okay, then I've got coming soon. You can see it right there, it says coming soon. And then right below that, it's got a street name. It says 000 street name. That would be awkward if that was actually the address. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on that box and I can do one of two things to edit 
the text. I can either double click on the box and I can type in 123 Main Street. Okay, so just like anything else, I can click into the box and type. Or here's my favorite thing actually is up top, when you click on any text box, you get this little icon up here, it's called typewriter. Everybody see where my cursor is, typewriter. And when I click on typewriter, it actually opens a little text box for me. And now I can go in here and I can type in things very quickly. All right, Fairfax VA 22033. Hit save changes. Okay, now look, because I put in two lines of text, it's kind of gotten jumbled up here. So all I have to do is just pull my text box out, right? And I can move it over. And there you go. Now I've got the address inside of that gray box. Okay, so it just, just, just takes a little bit of practice, but can really open up a lot of great things for you. Now, we're all pretty vain, right? We're in the real estate business. We always want our face all over everything, okay? So this is where a few things that we can do. Number one is, um, you can just go into images here. And if I go into my assets, there's my two headshots. Okay. There's the JPEG. Everybody see it with the background kind of looks clunky. If I move it down here into the bottom corner, it kind of blocks out most of the image. Right. So I'm going to delete that one. There's my giant head. Okay. And so now I can bring my giant head down into the corner if I want to, or whatever it's going to be. That's the difference between a PNG and a JPEG. I think everyone gets it now. Now, here's the cool thing. My head can just float around over here somewhere, right? Or on the, the top section here, you have drawing, shapes, frames, text, and table, right? Frames are exactly what it sounds like, picture frames almost. So you can actually come in here and say, hey, what if I want my picture to be in a little bit of a circle, right? So I can bring in the frame. This is like a picture frame, a picture holder. And then I can add my image into the circle right now that didn't make a difference but i could do it this way too let me show you so do you see how now it's a circle versus that square because i use the template frame for my picture and now i can move this around or make it smaller right and drop it down here into the corner everybody good so it's just an editing tool it's just you are you're practicing on creating these different pieces now let me show you some other things that you can do on here you can actually add shapes Okay, so if you wanted to, I could come in here and I could actually bring in a shape or when I do this, I'll do, um, right, there's like a little bubble, right? So I could bring my head over here. I could bring the bubble over here, okay? Now, obviously, I wouldn't really do this in real life. I'm just kind of just being funny, showing you some of the tools you can do, but I can change the color of all this. So I can click on the little bubble and up top, it says, all right, what color do you want this to be? I want it to be... Keller Williams red. Okay. Then I could add text into that little bubble. Okay. You can see my little body text right here and I can move that into the bubble. Now it's hard to see the black on the red. So I could change that to white. Right. And I, I could say, buy me. Okay. Everybody with me? I just clicked out of that. Let me move it back to white. Or I could say open house Saturday, one to three, right? Like you could put anything you wanted in here. You could, instead of the bubble, you could just do a rectangle and put in some key points of the home. Five bedrooms, three bathrooms, 3,700 square feet, right? That's probably more uh, applicable in terms of using those different shapes, but you get to add all these different things in, right? I have a quick question. Yeah. Since you mentioned um, you, that you could select like the Keller Williams red, for example, mm -hmm. um, do you have, or does somebody have like any branding guidelines, like a style guide that shows you like the exact like RBG scale for the colors? Okay. <laughs> okay. So where we went to get our logos, we went to oh. logos and branding. The Thank very you. first thing is a style guide that gives you awesome. all the color palette numbers. So exactly all that. Thank you. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, good question. All right. All right. So there's my social media post. Do you guys want to add anything else or are we good to go? Good to go. All right. Good to go. All right. So now a couple things. I don't ever want you to use this share button right here. Everybody see this share button? Mm -hmm. Don't ever use it. Okay. Because if you click this, what you're doing is you're sharing a link to this website. 
which is, is, is not what your client is looking for. Okay. That's not what we're trying to do. We're just trying to share the graphic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to download the graphic. Okay. So I'll say download and I'll download it as a JPEG. And now it's going to download to my computer. Now, great. Now I can go to my social media, right? Now I can go to my Facebook, my Instagram, and I can go ahead and post that picture. So that's how you download something that you create. Now, I could obviously go now to my Facebook, and obviously it's always dangerous to pull up Facebook Live on a Zoom, but just bear with me here. All right, so I'm going to come here and I'll say, Kyle, what's on your mind? If this is my Facebook page, potentially, right? And I'm going to create a post on Facebook, and now I'm going to upload an image from my computer, and guess what I'm pulling in, right? I'm pulling in my coming soon picture, and now I can say new listing. Check this thing out, blah, blah, blah. And there's the picture that I just created. Okay. Now here's the deal, guys. We did a coming soon social media post, right? That's what we did. There are 1,400 marketing pieces in, Can or in WeBrand. 1,400. So if you're saying, I don't know what to post, the problem is you haven't gone and dug around in designs enough because there are so many different things in there to use. So I really don't want to make that an excuse, all right? There's just one, okay? So that's social. Now, what I want to do here is I want to go back real quick and I want to show you just some of the other pieces that are in here so you can play around with it on your own time. And then you can obviously come to us if you have questions, et cetera. So we did listings are in there. You have buyers, right? So in the ones that are in there for buyers are, you know, do you rent versus buy? There's some different templates in there for, um, for that. Let's go. Let's go take a look. So that's our listings, just listed, just sold. Um, let's see here. So buyer, buyer, pre I'll, I'll show you the, the, the print materials here in a second. But lead gen, client love, or client testimonial maybe is a good one, okay? If someone creates or someone gives you a, um, a, a testimonial, whether it's on Zillow or Google or any other place, come make a graphic out of that testimonial. Right. And put it on your social media so that everyone sees what somebody said. You posting a link to Zillow and saying, hey, check out my, my reviews here. That's one thing. Or you could just come in here and grab one of these great graphics that are created for you. And you could actually, right, put in the testimonial, just type it out yourself and post it. And now everyone sees it. Okay. You have, uh, these are some of my favorite holidays, right? And now they have them categorized by month. So for April, if I clicked in here, you're going to have happy tax day. Okay, when is tax day? April 15th. Wouldn't it be smart to go in there right now and create a happy tax day and then go schedule it to post on your social media on April 15th? And then guess what? You wake up and you've got nine likes on your business page and you did it all a week and a half ago. Right, so you got tax day. Uh, you got Ramadan obviously is this month. Uh, there's a couple different holidays here it looks like. Um, we have Easter. Right. So wishing you an excellent Easter and you can put your own logo in there or your headshot. Happy hunting this Easter. So, again, they're all categorized. There's Earth Day. Right. Those that know me really well, I'm a big time vegetable gardener. So I'm, I'm all about Earth Day there. But listen, there's just a lot of stuff in here. So if you go spend a little bit of time creating these different graphics, boom. Right. Most agents, if you go look at their page, their Facebook page. Right. The last time they posted was in November. If your client goes and looks at your Facebook page and the last time you posted was November, how do they feel about your business? Probably not great, right? What if you went and looked at a business and the last time they posted was October or November? You're going, is this person still in business? Like what's going on here, right? So easy, easy little graphics there to make you look like you're present and that you're staying up to date. All right, so those are our social media templates. And you guys, again, I just spent time just going through these, right? There's no way we're going to cover them all in this class today, but hopefully this gives you a, a good foundation of where to go look for things and then how to kind of edit and download. Quick question. Yep. Um, so these are like the sorts of templates that I'm having a teeny bit of a hard time with. I'm not sure if there's something that I'm missing, um, but let's say like one of the East or the tax day one is fine. Um, yep. If we were to like open one of those and I wanted to just say like, instead of, filed sealed delivered maybe i wanted to say like it's that time of year again it, yep. wait is oh so this one is editable okay 
Which one was the one that you were working on? Let's go to the actual one you were having trouble with. Was it um, Easter? I can't remember off the top of my head, but yep. uh, maybe one of like the Easter ones that has like the big bubbly font. Um, the, let's see. I wish I could remember. Nope, you're good. It's good for everybody to see because these are like the real life things where it obviously looks nice and easy when you're teaching it. And then when you get in there, you're like, hey, how do I get beyond this? So I'm, I'm happy to see if we can figure this one out. So let's go to holidays. And you said Easter, like this bubble font here. Mm -hmm. right, like, is that title customizable? If I wanted to say, it's a great day instead of happy hunting. <laughs> right. Let's see. Yes, should be. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. So I this is where you can either double click, right? They are, they are two separate text boxes, right? So mm -hmm. I might delete hunting. Oh, I see what you're saying. I got you. The text is not what's editable. Um, all right, let's see. That's what's editable. No, nope, it's all editable. Okay. I, um, I kind of ran into the same issue. I think maybe a better example is the one you were just on where it said coming soon. Yep. Mm. No, so this one, it looks like the, the happy hunting is not, um, th that is the template actually, is the text itself right there. That I can't, I can, let me see if I can click on the box. Can I delete it? Yeah, no, so some of these are locked. So it does look like you guys are probably running into that. Yep, so this one is, now here's, here's something else we could do. All right, so it doesn't look like I can delete this text. This one I can. Yeah, happy hunting is actually what's locked here. Oh, there you go. All right. So let me go back. Let me just show you what I did. All right. I should be able to, I'm going to move this out of the way for a second and then I'm going to delete happy hunting. So I'm highlighting it and I'm going to hit delete. Okay. Now I'm going to bring back in the Easter egg. All right. And now remember, I can add any sort of text that I want. So I can come in here and I can now click outside the box, add text, title and now this i can if i knew what text it was it's going to be in this font list here say righteous i don't know if that was it um highlight text okay but no we should we should be able to edit it we just got to figure out what what the uh, if i click on this one so righteous 170 is just plain if i would have clicked on that text before i deleted it we probably could have figured out what that font was and then you could kind of like retype it with whatever the words are that you wanted to use Okay, so okay. Um, any, basically most all of the titles that like Happy Hunting, for example, was yeah. in, most of those title like fonts will be a selection in the font drop down menu. They should all be in here. Yep. I don't okay. know why they would use one that's not, and there's like 400 of them in here. So I'm not sure why they would use one that's not available for us to use. So yes, I would give it a shot. I would say that these are probably the ones that seem the most locked down is the, these any of your just listed coming soon's like that all should be very easy in terms of editing titles or descriptions there. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, good question. And if all right, so I'm gonna a... hit... Yep. Good. <laughs> Sorry. No? If there was a font that um, maybe you wanted to use that was not in the drop down menu, can mm -hmm. you download fonts and um, add them to this font library? I think in your asset section where you added the picture and the logos, you can add fonts there. Okay. Or you can actually, um, for branding purposes, if you wanted to use the same font across the board for a lot of stuff, you can save your favorite fonts there as well. And then they're always at the top. So you don't have to like search for them. So yes, there is a way to kind of do that, I think. Yep. Awesome. Okay. All right. So let's go back here. All right. So I'm going to click done. Now, listen, guys, this gets frustrating for some agents sometimes. Home takes you back to the beginning of WeBrand where we can create more materials. Done takes you out of this and back over into command. Okay, so I'm gonna click done and I'm actually gonna go back out into command. So I'll say, don't save that one. And we're here. All right, now let's just take a look really quickly. I'm gonna click create design and I'll show you a couple of different tools here. So I'll say create design. I'm sorry, I have one more question. Yeah, no, that's why we're here. You're good. Ask when away. you click done and it asks you if you want to save, mm -hmm. does that save as like a new file or does that save overwriting? Like if you were to have done like multiple coming soons, mm -hmm. will that override whatever you just did or will it save as a new file? Um, no, so you can name files as you go. So like if I had this one, this is the coming soon one that I just did. I didn't change the name of it. 
I can make a duplicate of this and edit it. And now I have the original and I have the new one, right? Um, or I can rename this one, obviously, and kind of keep that. So when you save as, it's saving, it's saving that version of the design. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what I'm saying. If you like this design, when I come back to take my next coming soon, I'm just doing make a copy and switching out the photo and the address. And it's got my headshot, my, my logo, like all those things are still on there because I'm just making a copy of that first one that I did. All right, so create design. There's some really good ones on this side. So create design, print, continue. Um, flyers, postcards, all those things work the same way as the social media post does in, in terms of editing. The thing about the postcards I'm going to point out here as it loads up is postcards front and back. Okay. Now on the back of all of the postcards is a white box where they put the address and the mailer situation, right? The address and all that stuff. You cannot fill in the white box. Okay. So like, let me go here to coming soon. And I'll do postcards. Okay. And so if I like this postcard, let's just say I'm going to use this one. Obviously, the difference between the social and the print is in the bottom right hand corner of all your uh, materials. You'll see it says two pages versus one. And so I can click on that little tray right there. And now I'm looking at the um, now I'm looking at the front and now I can also toggle and look at the back. And so you're going to edit both sides if you're doing a postcard, right? And this is the white box that I'm talking about, that anywhere on any of these templates where there's white space, you need to leave the white space there. Because if you were to use this and mail out to a neighborhood or whatever it's going to be, it'll overwrite over top of your design and make it look bad. So always leave the white box when it comes to the postcards. Sorry, can you repeat how you got into the postcards? Yep. So I just followed the same pattern. Right, so in command, I click create design and I click on print versus social. Right, there's two different things there, but it takes me to a similar place. And then same thing, when I get into WeBrand here, I'm going to see all of my categories on the left-hand side, right? And now instead of them being social media posts, they're all going to be um, uh, prints, okay? So these are actually all kind of like included with each other here. But you can see door hangers, that's a print material. Flyers, which is obviously a print material, right? So if you're going to go hold an open house or do whatever, you can come in here and not just a little half page thing. You could actually create a full page flyer, right? Multiple photos, text, and then also postcards. Okay. Now I'm going to spend a few minutes here because I want to show you guys this. Under buyer, buyer presentation. This is a huge one. Okay, so buyer presentation. I struggled for the first like four years of my business to like get a really good buyer presentation put together, right? This could be something I email to people that I meet in an open house and say, hey, if you're looking for some more information on buying a home, here it is. Now, I don't know about you guys, but do any of you want to go and sit down and put together a 27 page document all about the buying process? Or would we rather do two or three clicks, come here, and I've now got five of them that Keller Williams is giving to me? I'd much rather do that. Okay, I'd rather spend one hour and I'd rather customize this thing myself. And then, and then I can just move on and go on to something else. So here's your five under buyer, buyer presentation. And if you go up to listings, under listings, under listing presentation, that's also there as well. Okay, so then listing presentations, I've got templates here. Um, same thing as the buyer side. Okay, so if I come back down here and I do buyer presentation, all right, I can then open up, right, this design. And almost like in a magazine format, I've got these all these different pages and I can go through and start to customize what this looks like, okay? Now you can use this in a, in a multitude of different ways. One way might be to print it and take it with you, right? When you go to meet with a client. Uh, again, you can host it online if you wanted to. So you can see there's 32 pages over here. And you can delete any of these pages out that you may not want to use. Okay. So table of contents goes all the way through a sound decision. Right. Your needs come first. 
There's actually, I love this one here. This is all about the process of kind of buying a home, right? Kind of step-by-step. -step. So here are the basics and I can actually zoom in. So build your business profile. Um, here are some of the basics, right? Have you considered uh, who your main contact will be? What's your timeline, et cetera. And then all of this guys is editable. So if you wanted to change any of these paragraphs, the title, any of that, you can. Okay. Let me go to one of these other ones here that has like some stock photos. So if we go to page 10, this one's all about your wish list and your home. Again, you could edit any of this. You could change it from being your home wish list to something completely different. You can change all of the pictures on here. So if I click on this photo and I open up my images tab, right? I could either add a picture I really want to add in there, or they've got all these different stock photos for you to use as well. Okay. And these were, those are those ones we were looking at before as we started. So if I really wanted this one to be, um, let's see, there you go, right? If I was down in Florida somewhere and I was going to use that, I could use that picture. <clears throat> okay. So then what you do is same thing. You can actually come in and delete out some of these pages. If you don't want to use them all, get it down to the buyer guide that you want it to be. And then you can download that entire buyer guide. Now, let me show you. Here's an example of how I've used this, which is on my website, my KW website that I have. There is a great product called Flip Snack that will turn any PDF basically into a magazine. Okay, so on my website, I can direct people to come here and they can actually come to my website and they can actually read my buyer's guide. That's probably a better idea than like emailing it to them because that would be a huge file, right? Yeah, you're not going to email it to them necessarily. Everything I want to do is try to drive them back into my website, honestly, and like kind of keep them in my web. So what I would do is if I was going to email it to them, and I'm going to show you email templates next, that's where we're going. You can add like a button. And that button would be like, you know, to read my buyer's guide, click here. And that button just takes them to my website where they can view this. Exactly. Yep. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. All right. So buyer's guide's in there. Uh, seller's guide is in there. And then KW actually puts together on a quarterly basis, they create something called the quarterly magazine. And it's like articles about how to get, you know, things, colors of the year, right? Blah, 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 those types of things. And you can do the same thing. You could use that magazine if you wanted to. Um, as a graphic. So that's designs, right? Social, print, your two main ones there. And that's where you're going to go create all of your marketing pieces. Any questions on that? I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sorry if you hear a baby crying, that's my little one. Um, so I was trying to create a newsletter with, I think, an email that you guys had sent for like the spring newsletter. Okay. And then I was, I wanted to send it to my contacts and I didn't figure out how to, yes, I know. I agree. I didn't figure out how to do that. Cool. So we're heading there next. You're talking about email templates and then how do we send them, right? Oh, perfect. Yes. Thank you. Perfect. All right. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and head that way now. All right. Any other questions on we brand or social and print marketing materials? And I just, I do have a question actually. Um, mm -hmm. So the other day I was creating a postcard um, in, in command. And then I realized that there is no like print button. So there isn't like some of these materials, I know that it will allow you to take you to, I guess, I assume it's like a third party printing yep. house. Yep. Correct. That's not available for postcards. And even though quote unquote, I was using a standard postcard. Then when I went to the vendor that I was using their website to mm -hmm. upload it, even though theirs said standard postcard too, it didn't match up. And so then I ended up having to like recreate it on their website, which was, you know, not a huge deal because I had done the majority of the time already, but right. uh, I just was thinking there's got to be an easier way. Yeah. Usually when you download this, there are a couple different ways to download it. Um, and you can actually kind of change the size of the download itself. So this is a postcard. If I click download um, a PDF for printing, so I can add crop, right? Bleed. And then you can actually adjust sometimes the bleed. That's what's causing the issue when you try to upload it to your printer. So mm -hmm. I would just try it again, make sure you have the details from them on what they're looking for. And you should be able to get this file to be able to upload to their website. Okay, okay? thank you. And you are correct. And here's, the, here's my feeling on it, guys. There is a program where you can get some things printed and sent out. And I'm going to show you that when we get into campaigns. You should absolutely have a relationship with a local printer because some of these other ones take 10 days to get out and get mailed. 
that's too long, right? Usually you need these things out a little bit quicker. So I'm either a fan of finding somebody local or send them to Kinko's and just being printed. And then I'm actually like labeling them and stamping them. But I think time is of the essence in a lot of these different mailers or the time that, that we wasted is, is hurting what, what the goal was. Even Kinko's and some of these other printers, they have options where you can send it to a list. Yep. And you can so download. You can send them yep. list. Exactly, Andrew. And you can actually download like mailing labels from your command yep. contacts. So you could send over the file and that download and they will actually handle it for you and actually get them mailed out. Because they'll actually print on each postcard if you want. So you yep. don't have to actually label it. So multiple, multiple ways there, depending on the size of the mailer or what you're, what you're accomplishing or what you're looking to do. You were saying before that KW creates a monthly magazine with some real estate information that we can yep. then use and share. Where do we find that? That's in, uh, if you hit create design print, um, let's go find it real quick. Print. I believe it's in business basics. Or collect, I think it's actually in collections. So basically it's going to change every month. Yeah. So they upload a new one on a quarterly basis. So it'd be, you know, the cover is, you know, a graphic of a bunch of kids swimming in the swimming pool. And then the winter time, it's obviously something different. Yep. So if oh, we okay. go to quarterly, not monthly, <clears throat> I'm sorry, it is quarterly. Absolutely. Quarterly. Um, let's do business basics. All right. So it's under lead gen. <clears throat> personally branded right down here. And then here's the older ones. And you can still use these, right? Cause you can change the date on the front of it. So here are the quarterly magazines. So build and elevate in 2022, this was Q1 magazine. It usually comes out in the middle of the quarter. So like, we'll probably see the spring one come out in like end of April, early May. Okay, but just like the buyer seller guides, this is a magazine type of format. Same thing, you can create this and host it on your website or send it to a printer. And I have them actually like, you know, create the magazine for you. It depends on what you decide to do. When I'm a new agent, I'm, I'm all about red light, green light, right? Not spending a lot of money. You know, there's certain things that you need to do, but you got to build your client database and things like that first. And I think we got to look for ways to share this information without, you know, spending a thousand bucks on getting magazines printed and mailing out. And I'll let you guys decide on what that looks like for your business. All right, let's get back over here and keep moving so we can get through everything I want to get through today. I'll put my contact information in the chat as well. We'll go ahead and do that right now. And if anyone has any questions for me, just send me a quick email. And as I work through the day, I'll get back to you with some answers if you need some extra help. All right, so let's go back into designs again. This is where we're gonna go for the email template. Now guys, this is a two-step process, okay? You're gonna create your email template. And then we're going to go over into campaigns and we're actually going to send it. Okay. So let's focus on the first part of it now. And then we'll talk about sending it out to our contacts. So create design, email, and continue. Okay. We're not going into WeBrand. We're going to stay actually in the KW ecosystem here. Now you can see we have 72 templates that they've created for us so far. Okay. I heard someone say newsletter was something that they were putting together right? Um, you can use any of these different templates. And I wish they would put a little graphic on the front here. We've asked for it. I think it's coming at some point. You just, you have to kind of click on them and kind of look at what the template is of self. Okay. So let's say I wanted to, um, let's say I wanted to send an email out about tax day. Let's just kind of stay in the theme of the month of April. All right. So they have a template in here that says tax day. All right. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to open it up. Now, this is the tool that we're going to use if we want to edit this, or if you don't want to touch it, it's usually good to go. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. So they've got a picture up here. Tax day will be here before you know it. If you've already filed, congratulations. Give yourself a break or nine. Know your tools with the link to the IRS website. Trust the professionals. So KW has just created this template for us. If we wanted to go ahead and just save it and move on, we could do it. Right. And down here, it says agent name. All of this is fine because where is all this information pulling from? The marketing profile. Remember, we talked about that at the beginning. So if I click this little eyeball right here, this is your preview button. This is what the email would look like. 
Okay. And down the bottom, it would fill in all of my information from my marketing profile. Okay. Is that clear to everybody? Do we have a question up there? Is that Anka? I saw your hand was raised. All right. Come off a of mute if you have one. Sorry. Hi. Hi. Um, where do you go again to um, find a newsletter? Perfect. So we're going to go to designs and then create email. Okay. Okay. Give me a second. I'm sorry. No, you're good. I'm gonna, I'll pull it up over here again so we see it. Oh, I see. Thank you so much. Yes. You're welcome. No problem. You go back, back, way back. Okay. Yep. Now, guys, all of this is editable. So again, if I wanted to click on here and change this text inside of this email editor, whenever I click on something, there's a little pencil icon in the upper right-hand corner. That's how you get to the edit bar. So if I wanted to come in here and I didn't like this first paragraph and I wanted to change this to say, you know, we all hate taxes or whatever it's going to be, right? Done. Whenever you click done, it'll change the paragraph, right? So everything in here is editable. Now, a couple of really cool tools I like in this email editor is they do have these different tags, okay? And so up here, it says agent first name, client first name. There's all these different tags that you could use. One of them is contact first name. Right. And then you could actually do the next one, which is contact last name. Right. And if I put a space in between these and I hit done, right, you see it looks like that. Now, when I send this email out to 100 different people, it's saying, hey, Kate, hey, Megan, hey, Barbara, hey, Andrew. Right. It's going to pull from the contact profile and it's going to make it look like it's a personal email rather than just a generic one that doesn't have anyone's name there. Okay. So now I can edit text. I can put in some salutations if I want to. Um, and then all these little tiles over here are the different types of materials that you could also, or, or sections of a newsletter that you could also use. So if I wanted to bring in another image, I could do that, right? And as I drag this over into the editor, you see a little green line there. This is showing me where I can add in a photo, okay? So if I wanted to come down to the bottom and add in a picture, I could scroll down on my email template here <clears throat> and I could add it right down the bottom. And now I could upload this picture, right? And I could actually make that smaller if I wanted to, but that's how you add a photo into your template. And now the email was sent, it would look like this. Okay, so you can start to add sections and more content than just what's on the template, right? If you want to delete something, click the little trash can in the upper right-hand corner. And so let's go over these. So you can add text, paragraphs, images, a button, Okay, so this is something we talked about here is if I add this button here, I can actually say, where is this going to, right? So I'm gonna say buyer's guide. Okay, I can change the color. So I want the uh, button to be red, All right? And then where, where do I wanna link it to? I wanna link it to a web address. And then what's the web address? It's this one. Right. And I'm going to go to my buyer's guide that's on my website, like we had talked about. I think somebody just asked me this question. I'm going to copy that link and I'm going to stick that into the web address of where that button's going to take somebody to. Click done. And now that buyer guide, and I can actually make this bigger. Right. Now that buyer guide button is on there. And if they click that button, they'll then go to my website and look at that buyer guide. Okay. Now, here's the cool thing, guys. They released reporting a couple months ago. Where now, if I sent this out to 100 people, I can see who opened it and I can actually see who clicked on my buttons, right? So if I sent it to 100 people and 60 people look at it and 10 of them clicked on the button, who are the 10 that I'm really going to zero in on a little bit and make sure my relationship is as strong as possible, right? Clearly, the people that are engaging in my email templates as, as much as possible, okay? So that's how you create an email template. Everybody clear? You can start from scratch. I prefer to start with a template, right? So even if I didn't want to do tax day, let's say I wanted to do Easter, right? And I think they have like an Easter template in there potentially, but I can switch out this picture. There's nothing on here that says it has to be tax day. I just need to change my text to say, hey, hoping your family's having a great spring. If you need anything, let me know. The market's heating up. I could add a little picture of some market stats that come from my local association or something. 
So even though we started as tax day as a template, th this really could become anything that I want it to be. And then on the upper left-hand corner here, I can name it. So tax day 2022, and then I can go over here and click save. Where do you um, put in the subject line of the email? We're going to get there in a second. So then we're on step one, which is creating the design. Step two will be actually the email functionality of this. Can I ask a question? I My internet glitched and I had to come back on the call. Um, you said that this is not in the designs where you it takes you to WeBrand. This is directly in command. Mm -hmm. Can you show that again? I'm sorry, I missed it. Yep, you're good. So in when you go to designs... Right. Um, it just when you click on when you go to designs and you click on create new, if you do social and print, it takes you over to rebrand. If you click on email, it just keeps you in command. So it just doesn't take you outside of the system and you just stay there. So we're still in designs just with email. Right now, for some of you who might be a little bit further advanced, let me show you this. I'll say create design and I will say email. Oh. Uh, OK, I see. Thank you. OK. Just clicked off on it. Okay, some of you guys, depending on what business you came from prior to real estate or just kind of your technology savvy, you know, you have 72 templates from KW. And I think for most people, those are going to work really good to help get your business launched and off the ground. Up here, it does say import HTML. Okay, so Canva doesn't work. But if you've used MailChimp at a high level and you like the MailChimp templates, you can actually create a MailChimp email, get the HTML and bring that email into command. So you're still sending it to all of your contacts in command, but the design or the template came from somewhere else. You can use HTML if you would like to. Some of you, that's probably over your head and that's fine. Some of you probably understand exactly what I'm saying there. It's up to you. Okay. Again, guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suggest spend some time going through these different email templates. Okay. There's multiples in here about buying versus renting, getting your home ready for sale. Um, and so I just, again, I spent some time just looking at the content that was in here and then making a decision on which ones I wanted to use. Okay. All right. Questions about email templates, kind of where we go to design them. And I think everyone's going to need to spend a little bit of time here practicing and learning, but everybody clear on where we go to get the templates. Okay. Now let's go to the next step, which is going to be, let's email this template out, right? Or let's get it scheduled for tax day or whatever it's going to be. Right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out of designs and the other half of the class today, we're right on pace, which is great, is going to be campaigns. OK, so the little megaphone icon right here. I want you to think of campaigns as outward to your clients, meaning emails to your clients, Facebook to your clients. That's what campaigns are. They're, they're outward facing uh, actions. And they've got a few different pieces here. And I'm gonna, we're going to focus on, you know, we're going to focus, we're going to hit all four of them. But you have a dashboard when you first come into campaigns. And then you also have paid ads, which is going to be like Facebook or Instagram, right? So if you wanted to spend 30 bucks and put an ad out there, you could do that through paid ads. Emails, which we're going to hit here next. That's the one that we're going to finish the task we just started. Direct mail. This is actually a way to get your... your um, Postcards printed and mailed to a certain location. I really like this tool. I'm going to show this to you. This could be an option for some things. And then social posts, all right? And social posts is basically just scheduling on your social media. So not you're not paying for it. You're just setting it up so that it gets posted by KW on whatever date we decide to have it posted. All right, so let's start with email. Okay, so I'm going to come into email here. And this works just like MailChimp. Like what you're doing is you're creating a list of contacts. So if you've done this properly, and you guys probably talked about tags the other day when you talked about your contacts, right? How to tag your database. So the tax day thing, would that go out to everyone in your database? Would that go out to a subset in your database? What are you guys thinking? Who would that email go out to? Everyone. Everyone, okay. So my suggestion is, is, when you create your email list, like I'm gonna have one email list that says everybody. And like, we're gonna make sure it goes to everyone. And then I might have subsets email lists, buyers, sellers. 
So that way, if I'm sending out something that's all about home sale prices, I can send it out to all my sellers potentially, all right? This is fairly simple. What you're gonna do is I'm gonna click on emails. So I'm on that tab. Okay. And I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna click create campaign. And it's saying, okay, what kind of campaign are you looking to create? Social ad, Google ad, social post, direct mail or email. So in this case, we're doing email. All right, we're gonna name it. So I'm gonna call it tax day 2022. What's your goal? This is just kind of what KW is trying to learn, what you're trying to accomplish. I'll say brand awareness. Okay. And then where will your campaign run? Is it going to run through command email or MailChimp? For, for most of us guys, it should be running through command email. Okay. This is our free product that's built into KW. You don't really need to use MailChimp. All right. I'm not going to get into that today. That's actually because I've only added it to my system. You get 5,000 free emails through command on a monthly basis. If you needed more than that, you can pay for a subscription to get more. But 5,000 is enough for a majority of agents, I would say. Okay. So we're going to deliver it through command email. And I'm going to click on create campaign. Okay. So Lauren, I think you might have asked this question. This is where we're setting up the subject line and we're pulling in the template that we want to use, et cetera. So this is very simple. Sure. Campaign awesome. name, right. tax day. Account. It's coming from my KW account, basically. Right. Who's it going to be sent to? And so this is where, if you have already created lists, you're going to see them in the drop down here. Okay. So, like, I've got one that's just Kyle. And the reason I do that is I like to test these emails on myself before I send them out to everybody. Right. Because if there's a formatting issue or something, I like to send it to just me or just my family. Like, I, I bring in my brothers and my sisters and I'm like, hey, check out that email I just sent you. Does it look correct? And I click on the buttons and I make sure the links work. Once I know that it works, then I'll send it out to everybody, okay? So what you can do is you can come in here and you can say create list. And if you haven't done this before, this will be a task you do. And I could say, I'm gonna call this all contacts, all right? And you can actually do a select all. Now here's the deal. You can only add a hundred at a time, but I just added a hundred people. Now I can scroll down and it adds a whole bunch. So I'll say load more. And actually I scroll to the bottom of my contacts and then I click select all and it would select everybody at one time. Okay. Or what you could do is you could filter by tag. So if you had your tag set up and you wanted your, let's say I wanted to send an email out to just my KW people, right? I could actually filter by my tag and it says, okay, great. And I could start to say, all right, select my hundred contacts in here that are all KW. So all you're doing guys is creating an email list. Hopefully everyone understands that, okay? So you're gonna select your list of who is the email going to. Who's it coming from, okay? So this is a bulk mailer, just like MailChimp, right? When you send something from MailChimp, it doesn't come from Kyle Holler and at kw.com, right? It comes from a, a different address that's a bulk mailer address. However, where is it coming back to? If someone responds to that, where do you want the reply to come back to? You can set it up as, I want it to come back to my KW email address so I don't miss anything. All right. So I could say it's coming from Kyle Holleran. Um, I could also say, hey, it's coming from Kyle Holleran dash realtor. If you're really trying to like brand yourself or something along those lines, so people know like who is who. Okay. Then your subject line. Don't forget. Tax day. One week away. Okay. Now I'm using tax day as an example here. I'm gonna encourage you, encourage you guys to get creative with this, <clears throat> okay? One thing you don't wanna do is get lumped into <clears throat> on tax day. You get an email from your accountant and your financial advisor and your realtor, right? Like if everyone hits the happy birthday on the same day, it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel good, right? So get out in front of it, right? Maybe you do it a week ahead of time, say something funny, add some other content in there to, to make it make tax day engaging in some capacity, all right? So tax day one week away, and then I'm gonna say select design, okay? And I've got my templates and I've got my KWRI templates as well. And this is where I can choose, um, I can choose my template, all right? So I don't think I saved it unfortunately, but let's just use this one as an example. 
Okay, so coming up this week, this is one that I kind of worked on a little bit. Well, let me go back. Um, let's just go back into KWR designs and I'll find tax day. There it is. Save and exit. All right, so everybody with me? So campaigns, create an email, subject line, pick your list, pull in your design. All right, now I can preview. So it's, it shows me here what it looks like, okay? So I can see a preview of what that email is gonna be. I can either send it right now and this would send out to everybody that's on that list immediately. Or you can schedule your email to go out. So today is April 6th, right? So this really would need to go out on the 8th and that would be one week away. So I can actually select the 8th. And if you scroll down, you can select your time. Don't ever make it 12 o'clock on the dot, right? This is gonna be sent out at 12.07 PM. So it looks like I just clicked the button versus an automated machine just did it, right? And I can say apply time and date. And now if I'm going away on Friday and I'm going to go do something fun with my family or I'm showing houses, that email is sent out and there you go. Right now, everyone got that email that uh, was on that list. Okay, so is that clear? So that's how you do a one-off email. All right, so create your design, come into campaigns, select your list, and then we're able to send that email out that way. Questions on that? Okay, now here's the last thing. I'm going I'm to jump out of this section real quick just for a minute. If you go to reports section, so that's a little bar graph down here on the left-hand side. And you guys don't have to follow me here if you're on the screen, just stay here. But if you go to reports, I'll say yes. In the reports section, there is a tab for emails where you can actually start tracking all of that activity, right? So again, emails right here. Right, and let me go back a month because I haven't sent anything out in April. This isn't my actual account either. This is like my training account. So, all right, so if I come to emails, right, it'll actually show me how many of my emails were delivered, who opened my email, and I can actually click on view details here and it'll actually show me like people's names. So Jen Williams did, JC did, right? And then who actually clicked on the button, okay? And so this is actually a great way for you to kind of like track your email and know who's engaging in your stuff or what do you need to change, right? Just like every other major company is doing, right? And I always ask people, like, who do you get an email from? What businesses email you that you're like looking forward to getting their email? Does anyone have any businesses that they really enjoy getting newsletters from or anything? Or is it all delete, delete, delete? I want you to think about it. Because if you're going to be one of those businesses, expect that your clients are just going to hit delete, delete, delete. Okay. So this is where you got to think outside the box a little bit. All right. And all of it may not even be real estate related. Like I know some great agents that on their monthly newsletter, they do a restaurant review, right. And they're, they're engaging a business owner and getting a little video of them saying, Hey, you wanted to you know, introduce you to this new restaurant or, Hey, coming up this month in April, here's all the farmer's markets that are in Fairfax and Loudoun County. Right. Think about ways that, that people actually want to open your email. Because if you're sending out like mortgage rates to people that aren't in the market to buy or sell, how much do they care about mortgage rates? Zero percent. Right. Not five percent where we are today. Zero percent. OK, so you got to make sure that this stuff is engaging. And that's where you might want to have different lists for different people, because if you're buying, you might want to hear about interest rates and what's going on with that. But that's not for everybody. So you got to be very specific about the way you work your email, or you will see your clicks go down over time because people are like, there's nothing of value here. I, I'm, you know, I don't care. I'm just going to delete Megan's email. Like that's the opposite of what we want to see. All right. Let's, let's share some ideas here. I'm kind of getting tired of talking a little bit. Let's share some ideas. What are some things? What are some items of value that you guys could be emailing to people that would actually make them open your email coming from your realtor? Upcoming events in the area. Love it. Okay. Comps in their neighborhood. What's that? Comps in their neighborhood. Yeah. Like um, I always tell people every time I go home, my dad's like, what did that house sell for down the street? What did that house sell for? I'm like, hey, you can look it up on like 40 websites, but he doesn't do it. Right. 
So for me, it's yeah, exactly. You be careful using photos from the MLS. You're not allowed to use those, but you can use the stats, right? Here's all the homes sold this past month in your neighborhood, right? And maybe you break down your emails into different neighborhood groups. So that way, when I get it, like if you, so I'll actually live in, in Annapolis, Maryland. Okay. If you send me an email about Baltimore, I'm not opening that because that's not where I live. I, I don't care about those homes. Right. But if you send me something about Annapolis or million dollar homes listed this month on a nap, like something like that might get me to click on it and look at it and engage a little bit more than just generic. So good idea. Maybe recipes. Maybe recipes. Yep. I'm not a very, you know, I'm not a chef. However, you can find ways to tie those things together. Okay. Now I always say this to people, if they can Google it and find it in 30 seconds, they're not going to look at it in your email. Okay. Now, that doesn't mean that, that you can't do that, but absolutely, let's find ways of parring that. Um, you know, here's one of my favorite spring meals, right? My family and I enjoy in the spring peas from the garden, and this is one of my favorite dishes, like, because here's what happens when you do something like that. Now you're getting some engagement. They know your family a little bit more. They trust you. They understand what's going on in your, you know, so you just got to create some personal touches um, in order to kind of engage people in that type of thing. Any more? Guys, get, get, I have get, a question. Yeah, go ahead. If I have a listing, and maybe this is a legal question. If I have a listing, can I do a campaign with my own listing? Absolutely, 100%. You should be blowing that thing up all over the place. Everyone in the world should know that you have a new listing and that it went under contract in three days and sold for $40,000 over, right? Like you're trying to get them to make sure that they know, hey, this, is, this person is very productive, right? You that can even go to agents in your office, right? If you guys were in my yes. office and I was a new agent, I would go to some agents and I'd say, hey, um, is there any way I can market your new listing, right? Can I send that out to my database? If I'm the listing agent of that property and I already have the listing, you blasting that to your database only is more exposure for me. So get creative here on the way that, um, yeah, the way that you're trying to do your marketing and stuff. Yep. I'm also going to say, be, be very strong in business to business relationships, okay? Every single one of us is in the business of lead generation. Whether you're a dentist, an attorney, a doctor, you could be the best at any of those fields. If you don't have clients, how much money are you making? Zero. Okay. So I, I would say that's what I did was I went out, go find a landscaper right now and ask them, hey, I've got 400 people in my database. If I, you know, can we strike a deal? Like what's your normal spring cleanup, yard cleanup? 200 bucks. If I blasted it to... 400 people, would you do it for my clients for 175? What is that person going to say? Yes. Right. Okay. Now my emails got on there. Hey, vendor of the month is RNJ landscaping. And because you're a client of mine, 25 bucks off spring cleanup, if anybody needs it. Right. But do some vetting, make sure you're finding like good reputable people that make your business look good. But again, now someone's looking at what's going on there. Right. And they're getting a little bit more engaged. What is the value that you're bringing to your client? That's what you need to ask yourself every single day you wake up. All right, emails. Everybody good on emails? I know that was a hot topic when we started. So create emails and designs, send emails and campaigns. Everybody feel like they got a starting point there? Yeah, this is great info. Thank you. Perfect. All right, let's finish out campaigns here and then we can kind of open it up to discussion topics. So I'm going to go back into campaigns and let's hit the other ones really quickly. Does anyone in here need leads or is everyone like full of leads and they don't know what to do with all the leads they have? Need leads. Okay. I was going to say you're on the, we're on the wrong call. You should be teaching this class if you have more leads than you know what to do with. All right. So lots of different ways to generate leads. I used to have a book and in the back of that book, I used to write down every idea I ever heard about generating leads. Because if you come to me and you say, I don't know where to get leads from, you're, that just means you're not, like, you're not paying attention. There's a million ways to generate leads in real estate. What you have to figure out is what works for you and what you enjoy doing so you continue to take that activity. One way for some people is to buy leads. Okay, That doesn't work for everybody. Again, I'm a big red light, green light person. However, one of the really cool features in command is this paid ads section. Okay, And this is a way that I can create ads and put them onto Facebook. You know, you're scrolling through Facebook and it shows you like a sponsored ad of like your dog on a pair of socks. And you're like, oh, buy now. 
Okay. That's what we're talking about here. It's not on your business page. So I want you to think of this. This is like a billboard. This is Facebook trying to put it in front of people who you don't know yet and getting them to come into your web, right? Now, all online lead, uh, lead gen, right? All online lead gen typically has a one to 3% return, meaning 100 contacts come in, one to 3% of them actually turns into like an actual deal. So this is a different strategy and you're gonna need to be talking to a lot of people, but if you do it right, it can definitely work. So here's an example. I ran an ad, this was last year at this point, right? Last February on a listing that I took for friends. I don't really sell that often anymore. But I ran this ad, it cost me $16.27 and I generated 27 leads, okay? So out of that 27, I had like three or four legitimate conversations with people, right? Other ones were just looking online, clicked the button, wanted to see the photos, weren't really buying, but that's okay. That helped me get 27 conversations. Now I had to pay for those conversations, right? But here's the deal. Your follow-up needs to be really good. If you call this person one time, like that, then you've wasted your money. Most of these people are buying or selling nine to 12 months from now, all right? So that's why if you're gonna spend this money, I want you to make sure you have a really good follow-up plan in place, which includes the emails we just did, et cetera, so your name stays top of mind. So this is, very, this is fairly simple. I'm gonna hit create campaign and I'm gonna do a social ad paid. And I'm gonna call this one, um, here's a great one that people are doing right now, seller seminar. All right. Do we want to generate buyer leads right now? Is that something we really want to do? We could absolutely and get them out there and go find them a home. You know, certain markets are not as bad as others. But what do we all want a listing right now? If you can list property, a listing would be perfect because you're probably going to get paid ASAP. Right. So instead of looking for buyers in my ad here, I'm going to look for sellers. And so to do that, my hook is going to be a, an online Zoom seller seminar for 30 minutes. Right. And I might talk about, you know, the market, how to downsize your home. I might bring in my professional stager and have them talk for 10 or 15 minutes about getting a home ready to, to be sold. Guys, if I had 10 people who signed up for my seller seminar, like that is the best money you could ever, would anyone here spend $30 to make 10,000? Yes. Okay. But this is the, this is the game is we got to find that hook. So I'll say seller seminar. Let's say it's going to be advertised listing. Uh, or even just like brand awareness or event awareness. Now I can do my ad on multiple places. I can build one ad and it can go out to all three of these places. So I can do it on Facebook, on Instagram and Twitter and see where I'm getting the biggest hits, right? And so next time I do an ad, maybe I put more money towards Instagram because I'm getting more clicks from Instagram than I am Facebook, right? Now a question usually comes up here is people are going, I don't have Instagram here, right? Does anyone, anyone have that question? Who owns Instagram? Meta. Meta, Facebook. So in your Instagram settings, if you are linked to your Facebook profile and your Facebook profile is linked in command, you will see Instagram. Everybody clear? And those are there is, business. There is no, right? there is no market, there is no connection in settings to Instagram. It all works through Facebook. That has to be Instagram business and Facebook business, right? Um, it does Facebook business, yes. Yep. All right, then I'm gonna hit create campaign. And just like the email, like it's walking you through the steps that need to happen, right? So you can see here that I've got to get a green little check mark in each one of these different boxes, okay? And so I've got to go through this name and goal, text, media, Facebook and Instagram settings, lead settings, duration and budget. All right. So name and goal, seller seminar, event awareness, uh, picture, right? So I could either add a picture from a listing or I could skip that listing box. So let's go right to text. On the right hand side over here, you're seeing a preview of what my ad is going to look like. So I could say, are you thinking? about selling, join us. Sorry, my computer's really slow. Mm, let me let it catch up. All right, so you guys kind of get the point here. You see it kind of, kind of typing in up top? 
Now, the whole goal of a Facebook ad is them to click this button right down here, learn more or sign up. We can change that button. So what you don't want to do is you don't want to put your phone number in here. You don't want to put your email address in here. You can't reference alcohol, right? There's different rules by Facebook that we have to stand by. So, you know, even though some of you might want to say like, join us with a glass of wine, it'll be denied, right? There are certain rules of Facebook that we have to follow when it comes to Facebook ads. Headline, I could say online seller seminar. And just like the ad that catches your eye about your dog on the socks, you got to come up with what's going to make somebody stop when they're looking at this ad and actually click on the button, right? So online seller seminar, description, join us Thursday, blah, blah, blah. You guys kind of get the point there. So you're going to do the text box, okay? Once that's done, we're going to come down, we're going to add media, right? We're going to add a picture. And so again, I could upload a photo. Let's see, so add from listings, upload image. So you also see here when it says add image, you can either browse from your design library or upload your own image, okay? So let's actually grab one of those postcards we made. I'll say upload, happy Easter. This obviously doesn't make any sense for the ad, but you guys kind of get the point here. So you can upload a picture. All right, great. I'll say, yep, let's use that picture. Perfect, save image, right? All right, so here's our ad over here. So now we got our image done. Next one's Facebook and Instagram settings. So it's saying, okay, it's gonna run from Kyle Holleran, then which of my business pages is it gonna run from? And if you're an admin of multiple business pages, you can run ads from multiple accounts. So I'll say Keller or Holleran Real Estate as an example, all right? Now, once I select Holleran Real Estate as my business page, Notice it pulls in my profile picture, the title of my business page, et cetera, up top there, okay? Um, and then destination, Facebook lead generation form or site or landing page. I'm gonna highly recommend, like they have written here that you use the Facebook lead gen form. Because what happens is when they click on the button, it'll auto-populate their name and phone number from Facebook already versus them going to the website and having to register, right? If we send them to the website to register, our, our chance of getting their contact information is gonna go down, all right? What's our button gonna be? It says learn more. If it was a seller seminar, I might do sign up, right? That's what our button's gonna be. And then a website URL. So this could be an Eventbrite URL, right? Where they could sign up for the seminar or it could take them to your website, right? Or something along those pages, okay? So I could, let me again, just grab this link here, maybe. Doesn't make sense for the ad, but. I'll type in this, there you go, okay? Now the audience here, this is where you get to kind of customize. All right, do you want to, uh, are we looking for somebody, where are we looking for them from? I'm not looking in Austin, Texas, right? So for me, it's gonna be, let's say we do Fairfax, Virginia. And then how many miles from Fairfax do you want this ad to run from? So I can say, I want this to run, Man, there's a lot of Fairfaxes out there. Uh, I like to do 15 miles. That's the lowest you can go, but that kind of keeps my ad fairly hyper-local. So people in uh, Richmond won't, won't see this ad, right? It's only people within 15 miles of the center of Fairfax. You can also do custom audience, which is starting to like target people. Um, and Facebook has, right? They kind of have a, a list of interests in here that you could use. So I could say, if people show interest in Zillow and realtor.com, put this ad in front of them. So we're narrowing down that list a little bit in terms of who sees the ad and you might see better results through that, through that, okay? Interests are really, um, they're important. And if you think about it, like let's say you were targeting luxury sellers. What are some interests for luxury sellers that we could target to try to hit those people? Vacations. Okay, vacations. Boating, golfing, <laughs> I don't know. Golfing's a good one. Yep, boating's probably a good one as well. A lot Maybe of people like say like- High-end brands. High-end amenities in the area. Yep, high-end amenities. New a jobs. lot of people say, what's that? New jobs. Yeah, new jobs. That's not one of the interests, but um, um, some people say like Ferrari. All right, who else likes Ferraris? 10-year-olds, okay. So something like Wall Street Journal, 
You guys get my point here? When you really think about those different interests, you can really target somebody because something like a high-end financial, you know, newspaper or something, not, not that Wall Street Journal is, but you guys kind of get my point there. Whatever that brand is, we want to make sure we're disqualifying other people who might like, like the brand that aren't high net worth individuals, right? So there's ones in there like financial advising is one. Okay, well, if you're worth a lot of money, you probably are you know, dabbling around in some financial advising type of stuff. So think about that, but it's a way to kind of target your, your ad out to the clients. Okay. And then here's the cool thing. When leads start rolling in, when you schedule this post, you're getting alerts on your phone, on your command app saying new lead. And you can follow right up with that person and say, hey, I saw you just clicked on my Facebook ad, blah, blah, blah. Um, so you start to get alerted as those leads start coming in from the ad. All right, and then the last one here is lead settings. And so this is kind of what we were just talking about there. When a lead comes in, you can auto tag it. So you can tag it as like, where did this lead come from? So in the contacts on the profile, there's a tag next to their name. Or you could also add them to a smart plan. So if I was at like dinner or something like that, if I added them to a smart plan, I could set up a smart plan that said, hey, thanks for you know, registering for my seller seminar. Like what's your timeline? And I could set it up so that that email automatically goes out like while I'm sitting at dinner, right? So the lead comes in. That triggers the smart plan to start. And now I'm engaging with somebody and it's not actually me making doing the engagement. Okay. Megan, I saw you had a question. I'm not sure if you put your hand down because it was answered. You guys good? All right. Uh, Karen Sorry. said, would this, be, yeah, go ahead. Um, is there a way when you get your leads back from this Facebook generated thing that, um, and like your smart plans, you could send an automatic email or something that says, please get a hold of me if you're interested, or is there yeah, a exactly. way to automatically respond? Yep. So this is it. That's exactly what this is right here. So the first oh, okay. step you would do is you would create a smart plan, right? And if, I think Got have it. you guys done smart plans yet? Is that tomorrow? Yesterday. Yesterday. Okay. So you saw on there where you can either do a simple one, right? Which is just writing out text. And that's what I would do. I would say, hey, first name. I saw you clicked on uh, my, my seller seminar. Were you able to get signed up or can I help you get signed up, right? That email could go out immediately as that lead comes into Facebook and now you're engaging that person. Yep, good question. Karen asked, would this be good to generate referrals too? Sure, um, you could run ads in different markets, but realize there's probably agents in that market that's already well known that's also running ads. So what's the chance of someone clicking on someone they've never heard or seen from before? Um, it can absolutely work. Uh, here's an example. Uh, is anyone in Hampton Roads? Is anybody down in Hampton Roads? Any Virginia Beach, Vernorfolk, Portsmouth? Okay, a couple of you guys down there. What, what's one of the big markets in Hampton Roads? Buyers, where are buyers coming from? Big military market, right? So I started my business down in Greenbrier at the Greenbrier office. Uh, that's what I was my first market center with KW. A lot of my clients came from San Diego, right? Because they're coming from San Diego to Norfolk or they got lucky and went to Hawaii or they went somewhere over in Europe, okay? So if I was still down in Norfolk, I might create ads in San Diego and say, are you moving to the East Coast? Are you coming to NES, right? If so, I'd love to help you find a house on the East Coast. But that's, that would have to make sense that I'm targeting people in San Diego, probably with an interest around military or Navy, so that that ad was going specifically to them and I might get some capture rate on the East Coast because of that ad. So, and then Karen said a follow-up, I was also referring to family members that live in other places as well. A thousand percent. You absolutely should be the go-to real estate person for anywhere in the country, anywhere in the world at this point, whether it's primary home, secondary home. Um, and what I tell people is there's a lot of terrible agents out there. And there are, some of you guys have already met some. Um, let me interview a few people for you. So yes, great idea. You, you definitely want to make sure you have a good referral business. And then was it Barbara there? Get the name. Yeah, Barbara asked, there's two ways to capture info, Facebook or sign up. Yes, correct. The Facebook one is kind of sneaky. I'm going to be honest with you. Most people don't realize that they're submitting their contact information because it's pre-populated. It's what Zillow does, right? So it's, it's already got their name and their phone number and their email. When they click like, you know, yes, they don't realize that they're submitting their information to you. If we skip that step, and that's this one we're talking about right here, and we go right to a website or landing page, then I've got to get them to click on the contact me form on my website and fill it out. So if I use the Facebook lead gen 
platform, I'm probably going to get 30 leads. If I go right to my website, the chance of someone registering on my website is probably 2%. So maybe one or two people do that. So I'd rather have the 27 names, have a few people yell at me and say, I didn't click on any buttons. I didn't want you to call me. And I go, great, I'll take you off my list. Um, I'd rather do that than have nobody to call, right? Because then I feel like I'm spending money for no results. Good questions. All right, everybody clear on Facebook ads? All right, you can save it as a draft, so you can always come back to it, right? Um, and the last thing down here I was just going to show you was duration and budget. It will never run the day of. So today's April 6th. It will never start today. It will always start the next day because it's got to go through the Facebook approval process, just like you were doing ads right through Facebook. So I could say, hey, I want this to start on the 7th through the 17th, and I'm going to spend $30 total, right? And I'm going to get fifteen, a dollar fifty per channel per day because I did Facebook and Instagram. Right? Hey, Kyle, one second. I do have a question about um, with with Teams. Have they figured out a lot of the uh, how to uh, differentiate ads? Like some ads, you'd want to send just to one specific listing agent. Sometimes you want to round robin that ad. Have they figured all that out? You can have leads come in and then within settings of the team settings, you can create lead routes and you can choose Facebook as the lead route. And then you can decide on like per campaign, you can decide on who does get that lead. Good. Okay. All right. So I'm going to hit save draft here so we can just go back into campaigns. I'll say yes. And then also um, let me give you an example here. If you don't have a listing, all right, this is what I used to do actually is on your website, you can search by county, right? Um, so this is a good one. So I'll say Fairfax County Schools near Washington, D.C. When I search for Fairfax, okay, it shows me a whole map of Fairfax. Everybody good? Now, there's filters over here on my website, and one of those filters is going to be open houses, Okay. So I can actually come onto my website and I could create a search that's showing me upcoming open houses in Fairfax County. And once I put that toggle on, there's the homes, right? So I've got 65 properties that have upcoming open houses. What if I did an ad starting on Tuesday that ran for five days that was, are you looking for a home? Here's a list of all the open houses this week in Fairfax County. Does that make sense? So I don't have a listing, but I can all of a sudden now create a Facebook ad where that when people click on that button, that's where they come to is this landing site because I can take them directly to this page. And now I can use this over and over and over again. So if I generated a bunch of leads off that ad, I could actually just duplicate that ad and run it again because this link has nothing to do with dates and times. It's just showing us open houses in Fairfax County. So there's lots of different types of ads on Facebook that we could run. I just want to give you an example of another one. All right, so let's finish up campaigns here. So we did that one, social posts. I'm gonna jump over to social posts here. Uh, this is scheduling. So if anyone's ever used a product like Hootsuite before or something along those lines to kind of schedule it out, check this out. You can see your month view of all of your social media. Okay, so again, this isn't my normal account, but here's what it looks like. And what you can do is either you can create your social posts. So I'll show you an example. Let's say create campaign, social post. And I can say, happy Easter, everyone. Enjoy time today with your family, All right? Whatever it's gonna be. Now I can bring in an image or I can browse the design library. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna browse the library and pull in my image here for happy Easter. Now I obviously would have put my logo at the bottom there. All right, um, schedule post or publish immediately. If you're gonna publish immediately, I think you just go to Facebook and just post it immediately. Or you could say schedule post and I want this to go out on Easter Sunday, which I think is the 17th, All right? And I want it to go out at uh, 9.03 a.m., 9.04 a.m., okay? And I want it to go out on my Kyle Holleran Facebook page and I want it to go out on my Twitter. Now I can toggle and see what it looks like on each one of my social media pieces, which is kind of cool. 
all right? This does not work yet for Instagram, okay? So Instagram only works for paid ads. So this is just gonna be Facebook and Twitter right now. Now I can come up top here and I can hit schedule post and I will schedule it. Okay, and now when I get back to my social post kind of calendar here, if I open up my month view of my social media, it's gonna show me on the 17th, I've got something scheduled for 9.04 a.m. both on Facebook and on Twitter. Okay, so going back to designs where we started the class a couple hours ago, guys, like go create five or six graphics. It should take you like less than 30 minutes. Come here and schedule them throughout the month. And now at least you're posting on a weekly basis or a couple times a month and just let the system just like push those things out when the time comes. Like if you go on vacation, don't let your social media just die for two weeks. Schedule some posts while you're on vacation. and At least there's some engagement there um, coming from, from the social post section. All right. Now, what if you said to me like, hey, Kyle, I really don't even want to create content. Great. KW has created all these things over here called quick posts. Right. So you can actually just click on any of the ones that they've already made. So here's one about um, uh, whatever for sale sign in your yard. So I can actually just click on this post and they've already created the picture. They've already put in the little blurb here. What's a good sign? You're going to get a great price for your home for sale sign with my name on it. And if I liked all that and I just wanted to leave it, I could just schedule it, right? Pick a time and then boom, I'm done. So they've created, I think there's like 30 of them in there, like these quick posts for you to use. And you can always hit the shuffle button and it'll show you like more posts they have for you, right? So here's three or four of them. And then I can hit shuffle and it gives me three or four different ones, right? So you could get uh, an ad set up using KW command time. It takes you to get a latte. I don't know, all these little ones. So anyway, just quick, easy posts for you guys to potentially use. All right, that's social posts. Does that make sense? Questions on that? Do they um, periodically update um, and add to those posts? Or are they pretty much the same for a while? They do upload like quarterly, I would say. Okay. Yep. So you will, you definitely will see different ones in there throughout the year. That's such a good resource. When I, whenever I think, wow, like command has so much to provide to us, there's so much more than I would have even expected. That's what I tell people. Like you're drinking from a fire hose, right? Pick the two or three things that are going to move your business forward first. Let's focus on those. And then we'll add more layers to it as we go. But yeah, it's great. It's a great point. And again, if I like this picture, right, your mortgage approved, but I don't like the blurb, change the blurb. They just kind of put it together for you and you can either post it or you can edit it, but at least it gives you a starting point. Um, so again, I don't think there's much of a reason not to. And here's the deal, guys. How many realtors are there in the country? Millions. I think we're up to like 1.6 million. That means there's 1.2 million business Facebook pages for realtors that I could go look at and get ideas and motivation and content from, okay? In Keller Williams, we call it R&D, right? Rip off and duplicate, Okay. So I'm always looking at top agents around the country and going, what are they putting on their social media? And instead of me sitting here going like, God, what am I going to post today? Like in 30 seconds, you go look at three business pages and go, oh, that's a great idea. Let me post about spring cleaning tips or let me go post about X, Y, or Z, right? Or this is a great way to kind of convey the way the market is based on the graphic. Let me just recreate that graphic for my market, right? There's lots of content out there. So don't be shy. Uh, there, there's really no reason not to have a great functioning business page if you're in the sales business these days. All right, social posts, everybody good there? Let's wrap up with the last one here and then we'll kind of open up for questions. Last one's gonna be direct mail. Now, again, if this is time sensitive, I don't want you to use this, right? Because this does take like 10 days to two weeks for these postcards to get out to somebody. But here's a, here's a, here's a really cool feature of this. So if I said create campaign, direct mail and brand awareness, I'm just gonna make up a name, create campaign. Right, you can either use, they've got a couple templates here that you can kind of just like fill in almost, right? Um, or under content here, I can say upload a design. And so that might come from uh, designs itself, okay? And let me see if I can, see if I can upload one real quick. Actually, let me just use one of these templates so I can get through to the next, uh, next one. So let's say uh, default template, or compact template, it's gonna be uh, coming soon. One, two, three, Main Street. 
Beautiful home. Wowza. All right, I can upload a image. And uh, let's see, picture of a house, or let's just say it's this one, or even this kitchen. Okay. And so you're, you're starting to get an idea of like, you know, that this is what the postcard's starting to look like, right? Using a template, or I could use one of the postcards in designs itself. All right, I got my headshot on there. I got my contact information, uh, my market center information, make sure all that's right. I'll say, yes, it's gonna be Virginia, Fairfax. And I'll say verify address. Confirm, targeting, so this is kind of cool. So I'm gonna say local targeting, or if you had everyone's mailing address in your uh, database, you could actually send these out to people in your database, right? Um, but I'm gonna type in here, let's do my office, 12700 Fair Lakes, there it is. Fairfax, Virginia, 22033, save. And then a budget. So again, guys, these, you know, you're obviously spending money on these. So the way this works is it's a flat cost. Okay, so 64 cents per postcard, and you could go all the way down to five postcards if you wanted to, right? Or you could go all the way up to a thousand postcards. So it's up to you on how you want to do this. Um, that's 10,000. That's a lot of postcards. Um, all right, so let's say we're going to do 200. This is the next screen is the one I really want to show you, which is this configure targeting. What I like about this is it, it shows you a map. Okay, and on the map, you can actually draw, I want my postcard to go here. All right, so here is my office, that's the pin. All the blue dots, it's, this is obviously in a fairly commercial area. All these blue dots here are the 200 addresses. Now these are some multifamily units, right? So if I said, hey, I just wanna get single family homes, I could toggle off of that. And now here come a bunch of dots that are within the area of my office, right? And there's a lot of townhouses there, so that's why you can see them, okay? Now, if I had a, um, let's say it's not a coming soon postcard, let's say it's a, you know, are you thinking about selling? Because it's not time sensitive, right? I don't care if it goes out in a week or two. It, like coming soon, I don't really want to do because it's probably under contract by then. But if I did a, are you thinking about selling postcard? Would I want to send that out to every single person that lives in the neighborhood? Maybe. But what if someone just bought that house like a year ago? Are they likely to sell? Probably not. What's the average time right now that someone's living in their home? Three years, maybe? Yeah, I guess about three years. Nationally, it's about seven, seven to 10. Right now in this market a little bit, people are saying they've got some equity. If they've got opportunity to move somewhere else, they will and take it. But to so check this out. So I can actually come in here and say, uh, one of these things is year last sold. You see it right here? There's these different filters. And I can say, you know what? Don't show me any houses that sold in the last two or three years, right? And it'll actually go find some other houses that are older than that. Okay, so instead of me spending an extra 10 bucks on a bunch of homes that just sold last year, let's widen it and go to people that have been in their home. So I could even say, I only want to see people that have been in their home for the last 10 years, right? And I could say 2008, 2015. Okay, so now it's starting to show me a map. Like, all right, all these people bought their home sometime between 2008 and 2015. These may be people that are very likely to sell their home based on the amount of time that they've been there. Okay, biggest bang for our buck, using some analytics to get there, all right? And then from that, you can then go to the next screen once you kind of select your area. Um, so you can do it that way. Or actually, if I scroll up to the top here, there's even a, a, a drawing tool, right? And you could say, hey, I want this mailer to go out here. And you can actually start to draw like an area that you want to send listings in this postcard to. And they'll fill in as many houses there, okay? So what's cool about that is, is you know, I've had clients before that say, like, I only want to live in this community and I want to back up to the woods. Okay. I can either go door knock those homes or I could actually zoom in. Like you can actually zoom in on the street and you can actually see the different homes and I could draw my circle around these six or seven properties. Does that make sense? If they want to live in one of those homes and I could send a direct mailer directly to those six or seven people. Now, here's a good thing. What if this person right here is an agent and we know that that person's an agent and they're my, my arch enemy? Right? They've stolen listings from me before. Okay, you can actually remove people. So if you can see, I hover over that dot. 
you can actually remove somebody. And so they're not part of the mailer, all right? And they come out and they'll add another one in to get you back to 200, all right? So it's just kind of a, a, a cool tool depending on what you're trying to accomplish, okay? Again, I'm not sending coming soon postcards this way because by the time the postcard gets to the client's mailbox, that house is probably already sold, all right? So try to make them non-time specific things. If I go to the next screen here and say next, it's gonna show me a preview of the postcard. And this is where you guys, once you click buy, it's over. Like these postcards are being mailed, okay? So you gotta really check and make sure you don't have any typos or anything like that. But here's the front of my postcard, here's the back. Um, and that's where, you know, starting this little paragraph here about the property, um, 320 bucks. And then I can move forward, right? If I decide I wanna mail that thing out. So again, it's just another tool in there to be aware of. And, and for the cost, they'll print the postcard, they'll stamp it. It says current resident. I get that question a lot. It's not pulling tax record name. It is going to say current resident 404 Dale Road. So if you don't like that, you got to find a different way to do this. Uh, but that's the way that the system is kind of built and set up. Okay. If you wanted to practice this, you could actually create a postcard, put your address in and just do one postcard for 64 cents and mail it to your house. See how long it takes for it to get there. Look at the quality of the postcard. If you feel comfortable with it, there's a system to use. So I did that. Um, I used to have it sitting right here for a little while. But yeah, no, I used to have the postcard and I actually show people like this is the postcard. And I would do it. I, everything I do, I test on myself before anything gets out to the client base. Okay. All right. So holy cow. We went into designs. Some of you guys are like, I'm about to fall off my chair. I can see it in your faces. We went into designs, we created graphics, right? We have listing buyer presentations, flyers, postcards, door hangers, like my Lord, a lot of stuff in there. We did Facebook ads, social posts, scheduling, right? Email marketing. So both the templates and how to send them out. Okay. And then finally here, we looked at doing the postcards, right? Uh, in terms of the mailer system. Okay. Give me some ahas, either questions or something that you learned today that you can go implement. AW offers everything for um, a new agent to be successful. It's just a matter of use it, utilizing what is best for, for, like for me personally. Yep. So it's, yeah. Awesome, Kate. You guys got to dig, okay? I wish there was an easier way. And like, you know, I, again, I run six market centers. I wish there was an easier way for us to convey all this information to you and just like download it into your brain. I sat on my couch, like watching ESPN as a 22 year old, like just digging into like everything that was there. And I feel like that's why my career grew when others around me didn't, because they're like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm like, how much time did you actually like go into the program and just click on buttons? Okay. You're not going to break anything, but there's so much here that you're going to go like, Oh, there you go. I'm going to use that. Right. So Kate, to your point, find a couple things. If it's creating designs and posting to social media, like do that, get really good at it, then add the next thing, but don't get paralyzed with the amount of stuff that's there. I, I tell people all the time, it's like the giant buffet in Vegas, right? It's like, sometimes you walk in there and you're like, I don't even know what to do. It's like, just go for the, you know, go for the ham, <laughs> right? Like ham and mashed potatoes. And then like, once you get that done, then you can explore other options and then, you know, go hit the ice cream machine or something. So good point. What else? Questions, ahas. I'm not an agent. I'm an agent experience manager at the Kingstown location. And awesome. I even think that, I mean, th I'm learning this two, for two reasons. One, that I can explain it to our agents that are coming in. Mm -hmm. um, and two, I even think that I can use this for, you know, posting on our social media, sending out emails to our agents, reminding them to take classes like this yeah. and, um, you know, other things to just keep our um, communication with our agents um, pretty consistent. So. Yeah. So, so Lauren, your clients are the agents in your office. Yeah. That's who's in your command. You could be putting them on smart plans, right? Mm -hmm. You could be sending them a weekly newsletter of here's what's coming up in the office next week using all, we're all in the same business, right? It's just who's, who's our target client. So exactly a very good point. Um, you could use postcards, you know, wanted to say thank you so much, right? Um, you know, to all of our great agents and everything you did in April and send out 140 postcards to your office. Like there's, you could use all these different tools in different ways if you wanted to. So great point. Karen said, I have so many ideas, but I get overwhelmed by all the information. I'm with you. That's what I was just saying. Okay. That's where you have to really decide 
what, what creates fuel for the next thing. And that's the thing that you need to do first. Okay. I'm really big on this guys. I want you to hear me on this. You're going to hear a million different ways to generate leads. And I just showed you like four of them today. You've got to pick three. That's it. Three and get really, really good at generating leads through three different ways. Once you get them that you, then you can add more things, but you will feel paralyzed because as you get on this class, you're going, should I be doing Facebook ads? Should I be doing mailers? Should I be doing a farm? Right? Like take all of that and just consume it and then pick the three that you really want to focus on and do it for 90 days. Because honestly, I think it's like a Bruce Lee quote, right? The guy who practices one kick a hundred times is much better than the other guy who practices 100 different kicks one time each. Okay. In this business, you got to get very good at something. So pick something. And I find that once you get master it, you get passionate about it. So even if you're like, I don't really know if I want to do this, just go for it. And as you get better at it, it'll start to stick. So good point. Do you recommend, like, if you say pick the three things and go yep. for it, like, what if I pick the three things and then two of them I'm doing okay with, and then one of them, it's like, I get a month in and I'm like, mm, I don't really know if this is working or yeah, if so this a, feels a right A month to isn't me. long enough. Okay. okay. Three months is. That's okay. why I said every 90 days, I want you to look. So here's the perfect thing. It's April 6th. Create a plan for the second quarter. At the end of June, you get to decide what's working and what's not, but not before the end of June. Okay. okay. Because yep. things like postcards and mailers, like farming neighborhoods, guys, those, those take, like, I want you to think about this. When I moved to Alexandria from Richmond, I was in a, like just a hot market. I would get 12 postcards a day from agents. Just like, Hey, call me if you're thinking about selling. Right. What happened to all 12 of those postcards? Garbage. Trash. Right in the recycling. Okay. So here's the deal. If you only send one postcard and you're like, didn't work. Well, yeah, of course it didn't work, right? But if you send a really good postcard and I get it monthly and I'm looking for it with what's sold around in my neighborhood and it's consistent for eight months or a year, now I'm going, Emma, oh yeah, Emma, right? But like that name consistency needs to hit me over and over and over again, just like Coca-Cola or Pepsi or any of these other companies, right? So yeah, you gotta, you gotta run it for 90 days. And then I'm gonna say that, and I don't really have any impact in your business. Then I'm gonna give you permission, right? To then say, okay, at the end of the 90 days, look at what worked, what didn't and adjust and go for another 90 days. But if you switch everything up on, on every three weeks to a month, you're not gonna get anywhere. So I just sent my first set of postcards this week. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I'm thinking to myself, like my plan is to send them once a month to kind of my closest 200 neighbors. Yep. Um, so if, as well as obviously my SOI, but my local SOI, but, um, you know, so I figure like if I do that April, May, June, I'm only each of those houses only getting three postcards. If I give up in June, like maybe for postcards, it needs to be longer. Yeah. I mean, just it's, it's, it's consistency when it comes to like farming. Yep. I mean, I think again, if you're going to pick a hundred or 200 homes to, to send stuff to like that's if that's going to be one of your three strategies, you're investing in that and you're going for it. Right. Um, Karen put in there, can we create flyers too? Postcards are expensive. Listen, don't use the print then. Create your flyer in designs. Go to Kinko's and get 200 of them printed out. Sit on your floor with a stapler while you're watching The Bachelorette and just fold them, stamp them, right? Because now all of a sudden that cost goes from $300 down to 100 and drop them all in the mail, right? So like right now as new agents, you have more time than you do money most, most of the time. So just take that time to your advantage, right? There's ways to do these things on the cheaper. And then as, you, as your business scales, time becomes more valuable. And I might use that mailer system because I don't want to sit on my floor and staple things together. Right. Like I used to get college kids when they came home at Christmas, they would basically do all of my work for the whole year, Easter things. Like they would, they would put together all of my stuff for drop buys for my clients, et cetera. Um, so yeah, creative ways to, to get this stuff out there. Guys, at the end of the day, this is about relationships. If you put a postcard in someone's mailbox and they don't know who you are, it's not going to work. But if you're out in the community and you're knocking on a door or you're doing whatever, like you got to figure out how to establish that personal relationship. That's where this thing comes from. So Can I just say something? A, sorry, piece of information for myself. So like I just said that I just sent out my first set of postcards. So I ordered 200 postcards from this online vendor. I had, because I'm like, you know, trying to do things on the cheap because I'm just starting. Uh, I uh, had them sent to my home um, blank. And then I went to the post office, bought 200 postcard stamps. And I find postcards for me personally are easier just because it's one thing. I don't have mm -hmm. to fold the paper. I don't have to put it in the envelope. I don't have to seal the envelope. So yep. the postcard bought, you know, 200 postcard stamps. I've got labels. I printed out the 200 labels and 
I put my kids to work. So I just had them sit there and put the labels on, put this, you know, sticker stamp on. And, yep. you know, it took my daughter about an hour. Cool. Absolutely. And then like what you say in that postcard is important too, right? And I'm not sure what was on yours, Emma, but like if I'm a listing agent right now in this market, I'm not determining whether or not that house is going to sell or not, right? So it's going to be like, so my postcard's not going to say like, you know, are we looking to sell? Like, because any one of us can sell a house if we have it on the market right now. What I'm going to hit on is probably my customer service, right? Like what are the things that are going to stand out to somebody? Like I might even make a joke about it because that's where someone actually reads the postcard, right? Like, yes, your house can sell yourself, right? service is what you're looking for. Like that might be my pitch right now. You just got to get creative with it. Leticia, go ahead. Yeah. Um, I have a comment about that. Um, mm -hmm. I was uh, farming my, my, my neighborhood, which is like about 1500 homes uh, for about three months. And, you know, um, four homes came for sale with different uh, agents. Yep. So I was frustrated because I had spent a lot of money farming the houses. Um, so, you know, we have to be patient. Um, I stopped doing that and my plan is to start farming my neighborhood again because I mean it happened you know they look for another agent they just don't know you or they you know we have so many agents probably their friend is an agent their cousin it happened it's not so, a, it's not a probably right like someone told me a joke when I was a new agent it was like you're born with a belly button and a friend who's a real estate agent correct everyone has them okay the decision is how are you better than those two or three other people, right? And that's that's where the change happens, right? And that's where you really, like I, I remember having a conversation with somebody, a couple of my buddies were financial advisors, right? Like guys, if a, if a brand new financial advisor called me at one time and just said, hey, I'd love to sit down and meet with you and talk about how I can manage your money. I'm probably going, yeah, no, thanks, thanks. But come back and talk to me when you manage other people's money, right? So that I can trust you. But if that same financial advisor went to a 23 year old and had that conversation, they might win that client, right? So you just have to really realize like, who's your target market right now? And you gotta go and be better than everybody else, right? Even if you went over there and dropped off, um, go to the dollar store and buy a, um, like, I know I'm, I'm heavy on Easter because it's April, right? Go to the dollar store, buy a color kit, right? For dying eggs for a dollar. Go drop that off on 30 people's front porches that are sphere of influence people to you. That will do way more than sending out 200 postcards to people who don't know you. Does that make sense? And it cost me 30 bucks. And put on there, egg dying contest, tag at Kyle Holler on Instagram, and we're going to give away a $50 gift card to Amazon. Okay, now I'm up to 80 bucks. Way bigger banging than your buck. And now you have social media being posted and people going... Oh, hey, let's sit down. Like I have a two-year-old, a two-and-a-half-year-old, and a six-week-old, seven-week-old. Like that, that, that helps me because when I'm looking for something to do, I'm going like, oh, let me grab this color kit right here that my, my realtor dropped off. If that's a postcard that's in the recycling bin from three weeks ago, what, the, what good does that do me, right? But if they're sitting down and going, thank you, Kyle, thank God, you're kind of, you know. So it's stuff like that, right? Like one of the best things I've ever seen was one of my agents in Richmond, they're having a hurricane and they put in like an egg, a piece of bread. It was like, they just made it a joke. And it was like, in case you're down to your last piece of bread, like during the storm, like here, here's your, and, and people were posting it all over social media, all over the place. And I was like, man, that cost them nothing. Right. But it was creativity. And so if you sound like every other agent, you're, I think you're off base, right? If you're coming in, hi, I can sell your home for the most amount of money, top dollar. Like guys, they know four people that that's their value proposition. You've got to come up with something different by building a relationship or whatever it's going to be to really gain those clients, right? And here's what I tell everybody. When I was in the business, guys, the first year or two was really tough. It was really hard, but I fought and I did get clients. And then year three, I got referrals. Year four, I wasn't doing much lead gen because everything was just coming to me, okay? And it's turned into a really awesome career for me, obviously. So what I'm just saying is, is like, you're in the tough part. Like I remember sitting on my futon crying to myself. I'm going like, what am I doing, <laughs> right? And some of you may be feeling that way today, but keep going. But then also be smart about your business and don't fall into the trap of being one of 1.5 million. Go figure out how to be yourself, right? And what you do is you help people buy and sell houses. But at the end of the day, like building the relationship is where you need to be. Final thoughts. This is great. Thanks. Awesome. All right, guys, I enjoyed spending some time with you this morning. So uh, thank you for being here.
again, I put my email in the, in the chat there, but it's just my full name, Kyle Holleran at kw.com. Um, and so, so if you guys need anything, obviously happy to help or get in touch with your leadership, make sure that we have what you need. Um, I'm a big fan of the Virginia region. Uh, if you're with KW, you're in the right place as far as I'm concerned. And uh, we'll, all, we'll all be here together to work, work on it together. All right. Have a great week. Talk to you guys soon. Get some sleep, Thanks, Kyle. See ya. <laughs>